Hello, Mountaineer Nation. I'm telling you, I really have a special guest, a special mountaineer, if you will. And that has to be, as I promised, Darius Nichols, eighth head basketball coach for the Radford University Highlanders. Dave, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, Wolfman. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing so good. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that rapper looks real good behind you, man. Uh, that auditorium there where you play your home games. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a little background of, uh, I can't remember what game this was, but it was a few years ago when, you know, obviously you got fans in there, so I like to keep this as my background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt you do, and I know you want to see those fans out this year. Now, April of this year, April 21st, you were named as the eighth head coach at Radford, and I know this is your roots, man. This is your hometown. What, what's it like to come back? It's good. I mean, you know, in the past, I've been able to come back, but only for a short time, you know, two or three days, <clears throat> you know, maybe if, you know, we got a Christmas break, sometimes four days, but um, this is the first time I've been back living here since high school. So just to be able to see familiar faces and a lot of people that have helped me get to where I am today, um, just to see them every day is, is, is really special. Yeah, you now this is for Mountaineer Nation, but I really want to keep this about your professional career. But I do want to go back and just read off a couple of things here. At WVU, you scored a total of 993 points. You had 399 assists. You were 45% from the field and 30, almost 38% from the three-point line. The arc, uh, one year you led the Big East in assist to turnover ratio. And you were a four-year letter winner, man. What did it mean to you at WVU? What do you think about your days of playing? You know what? It's funny when you read those stats off. A lot of people now, they say, well, you were so close to scoring 1,000 points and having 400 assists or whatever you said. And it's like, well, why didn't you, why didn't you reach those uh, goals or whatever? And I said, I didn't play thinking about those accolades. Um, you know, I, obviously I was close to getting it, but if I would have been focused on, okay, being a thousand point score or 400 assists, then not, I wouldn't have been playing the right way. Um, so that's what's special to me about that is um, just the relationships that I, I was able to form being there. Um, my, my former teammates, we still talk today and we're extremely close. So that's the, that's the biggest thing that it meant to me is that you know, all the, the accolades and stuff, that's cool, but the relationships I've formed, not only with my teammates, but throughout the state have been really special for me. Yeah, D, you know, and then when I think of you and I've watched you play and uh, as I got to know you, uh, you were a team player, man. And so that makes total sense to me. Uh, not really giving a darn about the accolades, but you know what? With that being said, though, you were very successful and uh, uh, a proud mountaineer, I know for sure, and proud of your team and your achievements because he, he actually did so much. But before we go now back into your professional grip, word association. And <laughs> this is what I love. Okay, so when I say John Beeline, what do you say? I'm a storyteller. Storyteller, okay. When I say Bob Huggins, what do you say? Relentless. Relentless. Yeah, for sure. All right. Okay, how about this? Coliseum. Uh, I would say rowdy. Rowdy? Yeah, definitely rowdy. You know, I would have I, to I hear, agree with that. Yeah, I hear I hear stories like I haven't been on the other side of it like a lot. Um, so you know when you when you step out of it and you you hear stories of other people talking about the Coliseum, I'm like, did that really happen at the Coliseum? It just didn't happen to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here's a good one for you. Former equipment manager Stevie Bear. Uh, I would say caring, extremely, extremely caring, caring guy. All right, one for the beer, man. I like that. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Ed, how about this? An establishment that is not open anymore, but it's what's called Coach's Restaurant. <laughs> I would say, uh, Soul Trade. <laughs> the one word or can we do two words <laughs> that's There's the last thing I remember that, a total reason for that and now my last question then would be is the conga line soul train little general stores great Darby and Dustin Darby those are a lot of names but I think you can put them all into one yeah Darlene was Darlene was involved in that uh, 
sold Trayvon as well. So it was, it was a family affair. It was a family affair. There's no <laughs> doubt. I still remember that. It was a great time. But you know what, man? It's uh, those are good times. Uh, learning uh, with you, and as you were a graduate assistant coach, and you were helping me out with the varsity club and the uh, former alumni. So I really appreciate that, and our friendship really grew from there. But when we look at your career, you started out as a GA, I believe, under Coach Huggins. Then he went two years to Northern Kentucky, one year with Wofford. One year at Louisiana Tech, six years with the Florida Gators under Coach Mike White, and now you are the eighth head coach at Radford. I mean, you know, what have you learned from those years of being an assistant coach, and now you're the head guy? Um, I was able to learn what to do and what not to do in certain situations. Um, you know, I, I've had a lot of hands-on training from all the stops that I've made. And, you, you know, the stops that I've made, I've had to formulate relationships and, and build relationships at a, at a quick level because besides the University of Florida, I, I wasn't at the other places very long. Um, so, you know, just going back and talking to some of the players that I've coached and staying in touch with them, just the impact that um, I've been able to have on them has been special to me. But, um, you know, just the things I've learned, you know, from all the guys that I've worked for have been really special. Like, you know, Dave Beasel, who I worked for in Northern Kentucky, he taught me, um, you know, it doesn't, just because you're a good player, don't expect them to know what you know. And that stuck with me, especially my first year in coaching. And then I went on to work for Mike Young at Wofford, who's now at Virginia Tech. And he just he just taught me how to, how to treat people on campus and how to build those relationships on campus. And, you know, that's gone a long way for me. And then, um, <clears throat> You know, working from Mike White at Louisiana Tech and Florida, the thing with him is just, you know, re-recruiting your players every day. And I think um, that's not telling them what they want to hear, but that's just, you know, building a relationship with them and taking time out to talk to them and get to know them. Okay, yeah, so now you're at Radford since April 21st, as we said. <clears throat> what has it been like for you as the head dude, man? Yeah. And, you know, has it been nonstop? It, it's been nonstop. The thing about me is that, and, and Wolf, you know me, you know me for a long time. Is that, you know, I just want to be, I just want to be, you know, one of one of the guys. That, you know, when you move the seat over, people view you differently because you are a head coach. But to me, that's that's a title. That's not, you know, that's not who I am as a person. Um, so for me, especially being home, it's just like, um, nah, I, I just I just want to be viewed as, you know. Darius Nichols it doesn't doesn't need to be okay. He's the head as a basketball coach, um, and that's that's kind of you know the thing that I'm I'm processing and going through that's been kind of tricky, um, but at the same time I am excited about it. Yeah, no doubt. Now I got to read these <laughs> uh, these uh, statements from three of your head coaches that I had thought were pretty special. And this is from Bob Huggins. He said, "I'm extremely proud of you. I've always known he was going to be a head coach." basically when he knew all the sets better than I did. Okay, that's from Huggy Bear. Now you have, of course, Coach Beeline. He said that you were always uh, had a thirst or you always had a thirst for the game as was one of the smartest players that he has ever coached. Those are big words coming from John Beeline. And this yeah. is just right when you got the head job. So uh, this is at the end, uh, end part of what he was doing as coaching, even when he was coaching with uh, Cavaliers basketball. And then, of course, he had coach Mike White. There's as many things. A former great player, a leader, a great teammate, an old soul, a consistent grinder, an ethical worker, a commanding presence on the court, and one awesome human being and I have to back that up for sure but with that being all said by these three amazing coaches you know what have you learned from them individually and together that has got to go forward into your job as a head coach um collectively like the thing that all three of them have is I think that the care for their the, the players that they have and then you hear that through the the, the former players who, who speak about. And so I, I think that's why they're so successful is that all three of them share that same uh, that same ability to put the players first in, in a lot of things that they do. Um, so, so I've learned that from all three of them, but 
you know, from, like I said earlier, from John Beeline, just the ability to tell stories and correlate that into an offense or a defensive system, um, you know, that I still remember to this day. And, you know, with Hugs, it's just like, you know, I, I said he was relentless, and he is, and a lot of people don't see the other side of it, you know, but how much he gets out of people and his players that, you know, even me, when I played for him, I didn't, I didn't think I had anything left, but he always pushed me to the limit. And, you know, you realize, and I think that's why a lot of players from Cincinnati, Walsh, West Virginia, you know, wherever he's been, it's kind of like an alumni, not alumni for West Virginia or Cincinnati, but alumni of guys who played for Hugs because of, you know, how demanding he is and you just feel like you've accomplished something. Um, and then, you know, with, with, with Coach White, Mike White at, at Florida, um, you know, I just, I just saw how he, you know, he re-recruited guys every day. And so that, that stuck out to me, even in this um, one-time transfer, uh, you know, portal movement where you have guys that can help and leave, but, you know, you still have to be able to develop those relationships for them on a daily basis. Yeah, D. Now, you know, that that's really a great answer. And, you know, let's pretend for a moment that I am a Division One recruit basketball player. I know that's a huge leap for you. Yeah. But let's just pretend and tell me, what is your vision there at Radford? Um, I mean, my vision for, it, for anybody I recruit is for them to feel comfortable with me. You know, I don't want to be a car salesman. I don't want to be a used car salesman. I, 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 always, I, I tell the student athletes, like, this is this is who I am. So, I mean, the, the best answer I can get is yes. The second best answer I can get is no. Um, so for me, you know, I, I've hired my brother here as an assistant. Um, he's on my staff. I hired a former West Virginia manager, James Herring, um, Timothy P, Jerry Marino. So, so all of those guys, to me, they're like family. So um, I wanted to feel like that but I also wanted to model what families look like. So, um, you know, and that's, that's the comfort zone that student athletes, student athletes have when they come to school and they want to feel that. So that's, that's, that's basically what I want to, when I, what I want to send off. Yeah, man. Now tell me this, <clears throat> how do you go ahead and get there? What is your actual philosophy in basketball? Are you tough on defense? Do you like to score high points? You no, know, are you both? Well, what is it? Defensively, I mean, you know, the, the way that we were at Florida when, when I was the defensive coordinator, my lights cut off after a while. Um, when I was the defensive coordinator, um, you know, we, we changed defenses and we changed defenses in the middle of possessions just, just to kind of keep the offense off balance. Um, and offensively, you know, I want to play, I want to get up and down, play fast, put pressure on the rim and, you know, spread the floor. Because I think that's how um, the players want to play and I, I think that's what people want to see. Okay, yeah. Now you mentioned you hired your brother Shane. Now, how is that working out with your coaching? And you know, he is an older brother, I believe. Yeah. So, how are you working that out? This, this is good. Um, you know, obviously, we have we have boundaries. Um, and if I didn't think that you know I would be able to do it or he would be able to do it, we, we wouldn't even approach it. Um, so it's been good from the standpoint. You know, a lot of people say. Okay, well, you're you're the younger brother, and the older brother's working for you. And I look at it that that that's not the way we look at it. That's the way that society and people outside in want to look at it. But you know, for us, we got a common goal. Um, when I was talking to a few of my mentors about the hiring process, they said, you know, as a first-time head coach, don't get caught up in hiring the best recruiter, the best offensive guy. Hire people who are going to share your vision, that are going to have your support, and back you 100. percent you know, the guys that I've hired, I feel like that's that's what I have. You know, I, I think uh, part of college sports that so many people believe that you have to go and start out at Power 5 or Division 1 uh, to really start your coaching career. And although you played in Division 1 and, and you started out as a GA, you know, your first assistant job, I believe, was Northern Virginia. Northern uh, Kentucky, yeah. I mean, Northern Kentucky. Yeah. And that's Division Two, and I'd like you to just talk about, tell them, you know, people, you don't have to start out Division One to work your way up. So my, my thought process on that was I could have stayed in West Virginia another year as a grad assistant, and, but at that time, grad assistants weren't able to be on the court, and, you know, work out guys. So 
you really can only focus on the video part of it and behind the scenes, but I wanted to do everything. And I looked at the Division II situation and I knew Northern Kentucky was transitioning in Division I. I looked at, at that as an opportunity to grow. Um, you know, Division II, you can be on the road a lot more recruiting. I could have built my contacts um, at a faster level to Division II. So a lot of people focus on, well, young coaches focus on, okay, the school, the level, all that stuff. I was focused on growing and, uh, you know, just getting better. So that's why I jumped on that opportunity. Yeah, I think it's key. I, and I think it really shines for you because <laughs> you actually saw what Division Two was to Division One to a Power Five, and now you are the head guy. So last thing, I, I, last question I have for you, D, is you're coming back December 4th to the Coliseum. You're going to see Coach Bob Huggins there. What's it going to be like as a head coach to come back <laughs> and be able to coach against him? Uh, I, I think it'll be special. You know, we played there last year when I was in Florida. And I think that was the very first game they allowed fans in the building. So this year I would anticipate it's going to be, like I said, rowdy in there. Um, but it'd be exciting at the same time just to go back to a place where I consider my second home. Yeah, man. Well, you know what? I, I told you this before, but I'm coming down to see one of your games. Now it's going to be after football season. Uh, so it's going to be in the winter time, but I want to get Darby. I want to get the whole little general stores crew and come on down and we're going to have our own cheering section just for you and the guys. Bring a party bus. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. It would not be the first time. So yeah, man. Hey, there's Nichols, eighth head coach for Radford University. Thank you so much. We just want to do a quick stop, man. But man, I'm watching you, brother. And I know you're going to be extremely successful. I appreciate you, Wolfman.